Mm. Look at that. Corgi overload on that shit. <laughs> Steal your girlfriend in this shirt, bruh. <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? Skatey Cat Vasquez back at it with another fucking video for ya. Oh my god, it's, I feel like I feel like my time of doing videos are expanding longer and longer. You know, everything just all the stuff's getting in the way. It's like when I first, when I, my very first few days of doing it, it was just like nothing was going on in my life. But now all of a sudden, I start to like you know try to be more committed to this. You know, like you know I get more busier and stuff like that. I recently took up a second job now just to start paying for shit, but. It's all good. I'll still find time for you guys. I'll still find time for you guys. I can't talk too loud because it is midnight and <laughs> don't want people to hear me all screaming and shit like that. But anyways, I'm back at it with some more haunt talk because I have been really, really into like, you know, watching stuff on YouTube and stuff like, and like, um, and like Instagram. I've been getting like friend requests from haunted attractions and like immersive theaters and stuff like that. One that just recently added me, which was pretty creepy, was called The Society Now. I found their page through HauntNet. And what that is, it's an it's a Instagram page, it's a website, Facebook, I believe, of just people talking about different haunts, you know, going from like normal, not scary farm to Queen Mary, to McKinney's Manor, all the way to like a bunch of immersive theaters type of stuff. And they did a review about the society and they said it was pretty cool and I looked up on it, I looked up on the website and I'm telling you like a minute after I get off of their page, I get a friend request right from from the society now. I accepted it because you know, you know, why not? You know, like you know, learn about some updates and everything like that. So I'm gonna see if I'm probably going into there and maybe you know, either uh, if they allow video camera, try to get something, or uh, you know, at least get a good review going about it. But the one thing that's been going through my mind, like all the time, more than food, is, is um, Zombie Joe's underground horror shows. And this guy, if you don't know about him yet, Zombie Joe is an amazing person. Um, He's a genius. I love his. I saw Urban Death at Midsummer Scream last year. It was it was weird. It was awesome. It was like oh, it was dark. It was scary. It was funny. It was just a little bit of everything. It made you like feel like a little uncomfortable too. It was just pretty cool. Like uh, funny thing about that day is when I went at a Midsummer Scream was when me and my friend got in there, got our seats for the, is that when we sat down right next to me was one of the main guys, um, his name always escapes me and I'm, and if some magical way that he's watching this, I'm sorry, but uh, the main guy from Horror Buzz, you see, if you're following him on Instagram, you always see his pictures and everything like that, he's like the main, he's like the, he's like the spokesman for Horror Buzz, and um, he was sitting right next to me and everything, and uh, I didn't notice until we were already leaving. I wanted to say what's up and everything, like, you know, maybe get a picture, because I've been following them for, like, you know, about two, three years now, and, you know, I just love everything they post. That's where I learned about a lot, of, like, most of this stuff that's going on. That's where I learned about Midsummer Scream and everything like that, so I wanted to say what's up, get a picture with the guy, but I couldn't remember his name, and I still can't, <laughs> so, so if you're magically watching out there, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> and I hope to meet you one day, you know, all that good stuff. But anyways, Urban Death, for those who don't know what it is already, it's a, uh, it's a twist from what we saw, it was a show. And from what I'm hearing, at Zombie Joe's, like, underground horror theater place, wherever, up in West Hollywood, it's like a maze, I think. I don't know, I'm hearing, like, a lot of different stuff, like, it changes and stuff like that, so I don't know exactly what what it is and I, I like that because when I go in to see it for its full experience I want to go in like heads first blindfolded you know so that's what I did with the 17th door and it was amazing and that's what I want to do with the zombie Joe experience there's a lot of other zombie Joe stuff I want to try to do you know he puts on from what I'm hearing of all the reviews he's putting on like a lot of good shows out there but anyways back to it I'm not gonna give out too much of it because 
the fact that at Midsummer Scream they weren't allowing us to film in there makes it seem like you know they don't want like too much being out there I'm gonna respect that but I will tell you that like it is pretty creepy you know very graphic uh, those who don't want to see nudity you know stay away from that um, what else and it's just it's just weird but in a good way it's I don't know how to explain it. It's uh, yeah. The only I once I will say one thing. One of the actresses did look like one of my like at the time when I was working at this one place. It looked like my manager, and I thought that maybe as a hobby she was doing weird acting like this. <laughs> so, it was it was weird, but it, it wasn't her. Thank God, thank God. So I would hate to go into work and be like, oh hey yeah, I saw you naked. <laughs> So I'm like really excited. I'm gonna try to get some tickets for some time before Halloween, before any, because we already had a time in October. We're already close for it being the 20th of October. You know, just a few more weeks and everything. It's gonna be all done, and I'm sad. Um, I'm trying to go to the Queen Mary. I'm waiting to see how you know paychecks, how next week's paychecks gonna look and shit like that. So um, you know, try to get there, and yeah, I'm just trying to find the time and everything like that. Um, one thing I thought about doing was, um, I don't know if they're still offering this, but uh, Blackout was doing a thing called 21. And what it was, it was, uh, you're they're able to text you, call you, email you, anytime for, I believe it's four days and three nights. I, I think it's that long. I'm, I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, and I read reviews about it. I've heard stories that there was this one couple that did it, and the girlfriend knew what it was about, but the boyfriend was just signing it, just like, ah, you know, whatever, fuck it. You know, my girl wants to do it, I'm just gonna say yes. And he had no idea what he was signing himself up for. They said that they were getting weird text, they're getting weird pictures sent to them, weird like, uh, like voices. Um, phone calls and stuff like that and it all came down to the final night of they come home late like around like 10 to 11 o'clock at night and in front of their own house there's a black van parked with the hazard lights on and they see two dudes just sitting in the in the, in the van and they don't know what's going on it's just parked right in front of their house but they just go into their driveway and they just they just leave it. The guy's not doing nothing, you know. They're not they're not outside the vehicle. They're not like like asking for help or anything. They're just sitting in there. So they do that, and it's it's getting later and later. Like you know, 30 minutes go by, an hour. Van still out there, hazard lights blinking right at their house, right at their house. Doesn't stop until like. I forgot exactly when the article said it stopped, but it was pretty, it was for a while. That means that guy was there for a pretty long while. I want to say like one o'clock. I could be wrong, but, um, you know, just any, anytime after midnight, a dude's just in front of your house that's been there since from what you believe is 10 o'clock all the way to one o'clock in the morning, just has her lights blinking, just sitting in his van. That is some sketchy shit. I thought about that, but then I started to realize where I live, and I wouldn't want to put the guys in blackout through that. I live in the hood, so if like some motherfucker's just kicking it out there in his car, hazard lights on, so someone's gonna come up to him and be like, "What the fuck's up?" So I wouldn't want to do that. Um, I remember watching the documentary called "The Blackout Experiment," which was like you know all the people who were doing it, you know, sharing their stories and everything like that, and. They did this one part where they would go into the people's homes and like fucking torture them in there. Cause I couldn't do that. I, I, I would have to like get my get my folks and my little sister like a a room in a hotel somewhere for the night, you know? Like, cause if I if I they would have done that, out then my dad would come out fucking like with a bat or some shit, you know what I mean? Just like thinking like someone's fucking robbing the place. <laughs> and yeah. And plus, something like that would always freak me out anyways, because it's like, what if, like, I sign up for that, but for some odd reason, like, some weird fucking thing the universe does that same night, someone actually breaks into my house, and I think it's just part of the haunt, but it's really just some real motherfuckers trying to steal my shit for real, and, like, hitting me for real, and I'm thinking, like, oh, it's just an experience, and then people from Blackout come in, and, like, oh, wait, that's not us. It's just 
That's like my biggest fear. That's why I wouldn't do that shit. So, but yeah, Zombie Joe's been in my head all day. That's why I wanted to make this video really bad. I'm really, I'm like really trying to get out there to do it. Zombie Joe, if you're watching this for some magical reason, I hope you are. Just a message hello would be awesome, you know what I mean? That's all I'd ask. <laughs> and I look forward, and I look forward to watching, you know, your Urban Death show, the full extent version of it, not just the what I believe was the preview at Midsummer Scream about a year ago. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm trying to find, I sent a picture of the Instagram page to my friend. I have not heard back from him, <laughs> so I don't, I, I'll take that as a no. But I'm hoping he's down. I'm actually taking him to the 17th door for the second time. We went earlier, I told you guys about it. He loved it, he wants to go again. So if he's getting into this, I'm hoping he'll like Zombie Joe's Urban Death. It, maybe that's like a little pushing it to him, pushing it too far for him. But you know, we'll find out when that happens. I will be giving some coverage of what goes on the second time around, you know. Seeing if it's like it's any different, I hope it is. You know, in like some way, like, you know, it, the day we went was opening night. So I'm hoping later on like, the actors are more comfortable, they're more, uh, you know, hyped up a little bit, you know, so that way, you know, get some, get some bruises leaving out of there, you know what I mean? I, I already fucked up my knee. <laughs> First time I went, I want to at least go out with like something else fucked up. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But, um, yeah, so I'm really excited. To go again I, I always love the 17th door and can't wait if I can go back to the society now thing it's um, from the article it says like usually immersive theaters put you into their universe but with society now they come into yours so it's I don't know exactly what that means it sounds like you know they're not gonna try to put a story behind it they're going off of everything that's going on in the world now it's not like pretend that you're like someplace else. Pretend that you're this. No, how's like you go on a fucking on a fucking Thursday night or a Friday night, it's like whatever happens there, they're gonna try to roll with it. So it seems like it seems like kinda like a nice uh, improv type of thing. And hopefully they make it like, you know, pretty scary and stuff like that, you know, so they make you think. One thing I'm actually kinda interested in is called the the grief project. I don't know if I said it in my last haunt talk or anything like that, but it's basically, from what I'm reading, it's a uh, you're you're in a story about three sisters who lost their brother, and you get to watch how they all deal with it and everything like that. It seems like something different. It seems like something that's like uh, it would be like um, interesting, like nothing that like any movie could possibly do. You know what I mean? Like a movie can like make you pretend that you're there, make you feel something, but when you're actually there face to face with whatever it's gonna be thrown at you during there. It's something totally different. So I'm hoping that I can get some tickets to that. Hopefully it's not just a Halloween thing, like they're doing it for a pretty long time, because that would increase the chance, the chances of me actually attending it. And um, so I'm excited. Like all these immersive theater pages that are keep coming up on my Instagram, it's just everything's just one more exciting thing after the next, after the next, after the next. And it's just like amazing what all these people are doing. I'm really, Looking forward to this year, uh, or the rest of the Halloween season. Hopefully there's some more to come. Hopefully there's something a little bit more closer by. The only thing that sucks is that all of these are up in Holly uh, like Hollywood and LA area. And I live close to Long Beach, so that's a bit of a drive. I know some of y'all are thinking, they're like, oh, it's not that far. It's like, oh, fuck it. You're not paying for my gas, so. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, that shit's far from me. I've been really thinking about, uh, the other thing that's been in my head all day today was, uh, I've been really thinking about like, um, I don't know if you guys remember from my my previous haunt talk, I believe it was like the latest one or the one before that, that I was talking about uh, bringing back the haunted house they used to do in my hometown. And I uh, thought about doing that, I was just starting to think like, who would I talk to? How much money would I have to put into it? Like, my girlfriend loves DIY projects, so if I can get her like really interested into it, I can get her doing like, you know, some of the decorations, I don't have to spend that much money. The main thing would just be like, you know, props and uh, some lighting. Everything else we can just do, like, you know, fake blood, catch up, fuck it up. But like, you know what I mean? But yeah, I just I just don't know who I'll talk to, but I'd like to do something different. Something like, you know, not just like something where you walk in and a guy screams at you. Something where you walk in and a guy screams at you, 
but he's screaming like stuff that like freaks you out like stuff that would like um stuff that doesn't just scare you physically but also mentally you know what i mean and then like of course you have like the the, the classic like you know monsters and stuff like that but then everything out but then like in a like a turn of a corner or something like that one room is just different from the rest or it's just like that one sticks out I want to make a maze where like one room sticks out because it was way different from the rest. It was something, it was it was like that off note that still makes the song sound good, you know? That's the one thing that's been going through my head. I, I don't know exactly what it would be. I have some ideas, but I don't, I don't, know, if, um, I don't know if they're like really that good enough. I would have to like, usually like what I what I think we, like what people would, would do in the haunt world is that they'd actually test it out as a mini haunt. Or something like that. I don't know exactly how how this stuff works. I'm still a beginner. I'm still a newbie. I don't know exactly where to start. I would like to start in my home, but I, I I'm too afraid of like risk of people suing and stuff like that. You know, we'll see how everything goes. I'm hoping by next year's Halloween I'll have like a haunt going up. You know, at least something for like the something for the city, something like you know for the community. I wouldn't mind like donating my time and my money just for something entertaining that uh, that I'd actually be enjoying doing, you know? But anyways, I just wanted to do this quick Haunt Talk video. Uh, I'm starting to realize that you guys really like, you know, majority of the ones I do. Uh, a lot of the videos that have the most views on here are the ones with Haunt Talks. And especially my very first one with the 17th door and everything like that. Um, I want to thank you guys all for uh, you know watching it. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you already hear me say this a lot. Well, I, w I wasn't thinking that like I would get any video to the amount of views that I got right now. I know some of you guys watching this are probably thinking like, as I checked earlier, it was about like 450. And I know you guys, some people are probably thinking like, ah, oh, that's not a lot. My video did this. My video got this. That's cool. Good for you, man. But um, as someone who doesn't really like, you know, I don't really know a lot of people. I know a good amount of people, but not a lot of people. And a lot of people. Are and half of the half of that people I know don't even know I'm doing YouTube. So the fact that it's getting out there like that much is is just amazing to me. And I really thank you guys. I thank God every fucking day that you know I'm able to get this type of like somewhat of recognition. And I'm glad that you guys enjoy it. You know, it's not like just some video for you guys. It's not just some video just to be like, look, look at me, look at this, look at that. No, it's something that you guys enjoy. Because uh, what I've learned is that in order to start a business, you need to find a need and fill it. And I'm hoping I can do that with this haunt talk stuff, you know? Find a community out there that loves haunts just as much as I do. I'll be happy to do whatever I can to make this channel more entertaining more uh, worth watching and stuff like that for you guys. The whole reason why I started my, my channel on this month of October was because I wanted to start talking about haunted houses. I wanted to start talking about Halloween stuff, the scare zones of every place that I can possibly go to, all everything, all the mazes and stuff like that because for those who do know me and know my girlfriend, they can ask her and they'd be like, they, they'll ask her, how much does he talk about haunts? It's like, it's very, it's so much. Like she gets kind of annoyed by it. <laughs> I split my year, like a whole year, into a few columns. So, October, it's haunt, haunts, 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 haunts. Whatever I can get to. September through October, haunts. Maybe some November, if whatever's out there still. But as soon as November hits, it's post Halloween blues. Then, you know, Christmas, you're just still in that post Halloween blues area. You're kind of sad that it's all over. Everything's just all Christmassy, which you know I like too, but not as much as uh, as haunted houses. So you know, <laughs> unless someone does something on Christmas, then like you know, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. A Christmas theme, a Christmas theme type of maze, that would be pretty cool. Um, and then like as soon as January hits, it's planning, just planning. I'm gonna save up this amount of money to. Do not scary farm, do whatever, do this, do that. I'm gonna try to do this many mazes this year. I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to go to this. And then uh, if I hear any word of blackout, I drop at least a few things to be able to do that. But I haven't heard anything about this year, so I doubt that I'd get the opportunity. I hope I do one one day. One day I'm hoping that like, you know, you know, Blackout just comes back to LA and they do something. Uh, I met the guy once and he was pretty cool. That one of the guys who uh, 
who runs Blackout for the VR experience. And uh, I think I already talked about that in my first uh, Haunt Talk, but you know, just to bring it back, you know, he was a really nice guy. And um, I think he was laughing at me because I was freaking out too much in the VR and I was talking. Because when I get scared, I talk a lot. So, <laughs> so yeah, him and like the people that were there were kind of like making fun of me, which I didn't, I didn't care, you know. You know, if I make them laugh, fuck it, you know. Um, but yeah, that's all. January's is all planning. January to fucking September, it's all fucking planning of what to do when October hits. And then as soon as October hits, all those haunts start opening up, and boom, going all to it. But yeah, anyways, I know this is just a random video, just like last one was. Uh, there's not really that much of a story to. There's not really that much of a title to it, or like a. A theme, I guess you would say. It's just typical haunt talk. Just everything's on the table and everything's gonna get thrown at you. I'm hoping you guys enjoy it. I hope some of this, like, I hope, like, you know, I me mean, talking about this, like, opens up your mind a little bit to uh, trying out something new than just the Acade, just the the classic Not Scary Farm and Universal, you know. Maybe it's like, all right, I've done that a few times. Let's try something different. And you guys, and I really recommend it to anyone because these, all these underground businesses, 17 Door, Zombie Joe, especially Zombie Joe, if you want to see something that's like never, like that's totally unique, Zombie Joe is your guy, you know? So um, I'm hoping you, like this helps you out in case you've never heard about any of these haunts. I'm hoping that like, you know, this would be like your window to this new world, just like how Horror Buzz was for me. This is like how Midsummer Scream was the giant door that I leaped through into the haunted world. When I walked through those doors of Midsummer Scream, I had no idea what to expect. But when I went down that escalator into the convention hall, everything was just a wide open field of opportunities and experiences and new stories to tell someone and it was amazing and it was an overdose of just everything that I've like really like been into that I can never find a good source for but I found all these different sources and it's just amazing and I'm, I'm really blessed to be able to experience that and I hope you be able to experience the majority of these haunts if not all of them. I know I've tried to close up this video twice already but I'm gonna do it this time. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to uh, hopefully next video I'll post up I'll have an actual story to tell you guys of something or possibly uh, I'll try to bring back the try not to get scared challenge and uh, maybe a gameplay or two. Who knows? But again, thank you guys for watching this time. Typical YouTube shit. <laughs> like and subscribe if you really enjoyed it. Hit that notification bell. Beat the fuck out of it like it owed you money. If you want to know more about some haunts, you want to just hear the ramblings of some chubby kid, <laughs> or you just, you know, you just want to see some funny videos at one point, you know? I'm actually working on some skits right now to do with my girlfriend and maybe a friend or two, and uh, you'll be here, you'll be seeing that soon, you know? If you're not already, Follow me on Instagram, just send me a DM saying, hey, I found you on YouTube, you know, just so I know that there's like some people out there listening, but um, I just want to thank you guys again and I uh, hope you guys have a good night, alright?